Hey guys, welcome back and hello to you new people too. It is time for another anti-haul video. This is my anti-haul number eight. If you haven't seen any of my previous anti-haul videos, I will put a link to all of my anti-hauls in the description box below so you can check them out. My usual disclaimer applies. Just because I am not gonna be buying these items does not mean that they are bad items. They just mean that they are not a fit for my makeup collection. And I'm gonna be sharing with you the reasons that they are not a fit for my collection. If they're a fit for your collection, you should absolutely buy them. I'm not doing this to bash brands. I'm just doing this to balance out all of the YouTubers who are saying, buy, 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 buy this. Rather, I'm, getting, I'm basically trying to promote smart consumerism. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into my anti-haul. First up for my anti-haul, what I'm not gonna buy, Natasha Denona has come out with a Sculpt and Glow palette. This is basically a highlight and contour palette. It's got like six shades, and while it looks like it's really nice, and I'm sure it's very, very high quality, I feel like at this point, highlight and contour palettes are kind of a thing of the past, so it's a little like, it's too little too late. I feel like the hype around contouring is really dying down, so releasing a highlight and contour palette now just doesn't really make sense. So while I do think it's gonna be a very high quality item, I just feel like it's not for me. Um, in general, I personally can't use all six shades in a highlight and contour palette because they aren't a fit for my pale skin. I find that I'm better off usually buying individual shades to contour with and highlight with so it's one of those that's easy for me to pass on next up Natasha Denona is releasing a sunset palette now this palette had me so excited when I heard the name because when I think sunset I think like pinks and purples and oranges and reds and golds I actually had like rainbow sunset hair at one point I will insert a picture so you can check that out because I think it looked absolutely awesome when I had it so I was expecting, you know, a lot from this palette and I was hoping that there'd be some duochromes in there and everything because Natasha Denona does make some really nice shimmery and duochrome eyeshadows. And then I saw the palette and I was like, oh, it's a modern Anastasia Beverly Hills modern renaissance wannabe. So that was disappointing. But I was like, well, maybe it looks better than it. Maybe it swatches better than it looks in the pan. I was wrong. Oh, hell no. When you see the swatches, it's easy to go what I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna touch that because it looks so boring. It's a neutral palette with very few pops of actual sunset shades. There's like maybe two colors, like a duochrome that looks really interesting, but that's it. And with the price tag, it's like $129. It's an easy palette for me to pass on. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know that I bought the Natasha Denona Purple Blue palette as an impulse buy when I was at the makeup show New York for like $239. And then later on had major makeup regrets because I couldn't return it and I don't use more than probably half the palette. So for me, I just, you know, it's an easy thing to pass on. I felt like they had, they could have done so much with the sunset theme and to leave it as another neutral palette. Ugh totally disappointed. So Lime Crime came out with this Moms I'd Like to Follow collection. And when I heard the name Moms I'd Like to Follow, I was like, okay, I have to go see what this is all about. And so then I saw the colors. The colors themselves look pretty nice. I looked at the names for the colors. The names for the colors are so cringeworthy. I mean, I don't know who thought them up and thought it was a good idea. But that take, but that's not even the worst part about this collection. The worst part, in my opinion, is that it comes in a cigarette case. I think it's tacky as fuck. I don't think any brand should be doing anything to promote smoking because I don't think smoking is cool and smoking leads to cancer and that's just horrible. In my opinion, that's a total fail. Not gonna buy it. Next up is the Becca Chrissy Teigen collaboration. Now, when I saw this palette, I was like, ooh, that's actually got really pretty packaging. I can't wait to see what's inside. So I saw what was inside and I was like, ooh, those are kind of corally. So I personally think this is a gorgeous palette. I looked at the swatches for it and I'm kind of torn because on the one hand, I really wanted to buy it because there's like this gorgeous sort of um, coral pink blush in it. And there's also a really pretty like pinky rose gold highlighter. But then there, there's a contour that I wouldn't be able to wear. And so I had to remind myself that even though it's only four colors, I probably would only be able to use two colors the way they're intended. And two colors I'd have to use, I'd have to find alternate mean, means for. So it didn't really make sense to me to pick up the palette, but I thought it looked really, really nice. I think basically when I looked at the palette, I was really attracted to Beach Nectar and Hibiscus Bloom, which are the two new shades. So it looks really pretty, but if you have pale skin like mine, it probably is not gonna work for you. So even though I think it looks gorgeous, I'm gonna skip it. Next up, Milk Makeup has come out with a new holographic highlighter stick. The color is called Mars. Now this is like a gorgeous peach with like a pinky violet shift. Looks stunning. However, I realized when I was looking at swatches of it that I already own a similar color. 
I have this color from Aroma Lee called Astara and it is very similar. Hopefully you can see that in the video. It's like a peach with a pinky violet shift. It's really gorgeous and since I already own such a color, I'm like, don't need to buy it. Next up is the Too Faced Clover palette. So Too Faced is releasing this Clover palette. It's basically, I guess, inspired by Jared Blendino's uh, little Chihuahua Clover. And he's a cute dog and everything. And I've seen so many horribly photoshopped photos of this palette where they up the saturation or they pastelize it. And it's really hard to tell what the actual colors are gonna be. Some of the colors seem like a lot of fun shades. Like it looks like there's a, a couple really pretty purples, a rose gold, and a like nice bright turquoise blue. But then I remind myself, I really, really hate Too Faced purples. They apply like crap. They always have really shitty pigmentation. So there's no point in me buying this palette for just a few key shades when it's also filled with a ton of browns that I would never use. So yeah, not gonna buy it. Next up is the Violet Voss Mad About You palette. So when I saw this palette, I almost bought it because it's all mattes, it's 20 shades, and I actually really like the Violet Voss eyeshadow formula. It's a more sheer formula that's easier to build up and blend out, and I think it's so easy to blend out because it's on the sheer side. So I like the formula, I find it easy to use. Um, the palette that I have from Violet Voss is the Drenched Metal palette, and I've actually used that on three different friends now to do their makeup and found it just so, so easy to blend. So I feel like for me, their formula works really, really well, which is why this All Mattes palette was tempting. But then I saw swatches of the Mattes palette, and basically it's just all oranges and browns. It's all warm tones. I wouldn't get use out of most of it if it had been like split between like warms and cools and I don't know. Something else, I probably would have got it, but because it's just all orange and brown, like, you know, all of the shades we've seen a million times over for the past two years, I'm just gonna skip it. I'm hoping that they decide to come out with a cooler tone palette or a matte palette that has like more rainbow colors in it. Just something else because I like their formula. Next up is Juvia's Place Magic by Juvia. Now, I don't care what is inside this palette, I will not be buying it. I had a horrible experience purchasing from Juvia's Palace that I will include in a, um, that you'll hear all about in an upcoming rant video, but I'm never gonna buy from them. They have shitty customer service. I don't care what is inside this palette. It could be all purples, all duochromes, all blues, all teals. I will not buy it. I will not touch it. I want nothing to do with them. Next up is the uh, Cleate Trend Mood Palette. So when I saw this palette, I felt like this was a very confused palette. I know it's crowdsourced. I know it's basically stuff that all of Trend Mood's followers have voted on, but when you look at it, it's just, it's a mess. You've got all of these blue cool tone shades and then you have all of these warm like red and orange shades and you have like these two kind of pink and purple colors that are just out there. But the biggest problem with the palette in my opinion is that there are like no mattes. It's all like shimmery shades and maybe like I think one or two satins. So you don't really have a good range of textures. I feel like the reds and oranges have really been overdone. While I love the blue colors and I don't really feel like you see blues often enough, because there's not a matte that goes with them, I'm like, well, what do you do with these colors? It's just, anyway, I feel like it looks like it's a complete mess, but that's just my opinion. However, that's why I'm not gonna buy it. Next up is the Pat McGrath Dark Star Set. Now, this is an absolutely stunning looking makeup set. Oh my God. I, I had it in my Sephora cart and I almost pulled the trigger during the Sephora VIB Rouge sale. But then I was like, no, it's $130. And I started looking at like all of the different items in it. And I'm like, there's no way in hell I would use the eye gloss because I have hooded eyes. If you try to put eye gloss on hooded eyes, you end up with a hot mess. I would just never use everything that was in the set. So even though I like a couple of the colors and I think they're beautiful, I think I'm better off going and looking for dupes of the colors that are, you know, like $6 per eyeshadow or $10 per eyeshadow rather than buying that set for $130 and then using like only two or three of the items in it. Cause it's $130, it's an expensive set. And that's really kind of how I feel about most of the Pat McGrath stuff. I think they're gorgeous, but really overpriced. Uh, last but not least is the Urban Decay Basquiat Blush Palette. Now, you know I love Urban Decay. Urban Decay's blushes are my go-to blushes. I wear them pretty much every single day. So I love that Urban Decay came out with another blush palette. I, you know, I have the Gwen Stefani palette and I love it. I just, I love Urban Decay's blushes. The formula works really well for me. They last all day. I'm wearing them right now. I'm wearing X-rated and I'm wearing um, Rapture. So I really love them. They work for me. But when I saw the palette, I was like, oh, I already own one of the blushes in it because I own X-rated. I don't own the plum color in it, which I really do like. And I think it would be gorgeous. 
I would never use the bronzer in it because I don't really wear bronzer and I'm iffy on the highlighter because I don't know if it would work for my pale skin. It might be too dark. So while I think it's a gorgeous palette filled with quality products, I'm not going to buy it if I'm not going to be able to use more than, you know, one or two items and it just doesn't make sense to buy it and only use half the items. Anyway, what do you think of my latest anti-haul? What are you not going to buy? please be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and found it entertaining, please give it a thumbs up and share. I love it when you share my videos, it makes my day. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss my next video. Thanks so much for watching.